Welcome back. This week, we are considering the legitimate restriction to freedom of expression under international human rights standard. The question we are asking is under which conditions can restricting free speech be legitimate? The answer to that question is to be located in the wording of the international or regional provisions related to freedom of expression, which has resulted in the so-called three-part test. In the previous segment, we reviewed the first step of the test, which is the test of legality, meaning the restriction must be enshrined in law. In this segment, we will consider the second step, that of the valid grounds for the restriction. So, Article 19 in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights identifies five grounds grouped under two categories, and you can see those grounds uh, on your screen. Ground one, for the respect of the rights or reputations of others. Ground two, or B, for the protection of national security or of public order or of public health or morals. The American Convention and the African Declaration for Freedom of Expression offers more or less the same possible grounds for restrictions. The European Convention, which is the oldest of all, has a more detailed list of grounds under which freedom of expression may be restricted. And I'm going to read it. The exercise of this freedom, since it carries with it duties and responsibilities, may be subject to such formalities, conditions, restrictions or penalties as are prescribed by law, necessary in a democratic society in the interest of national security, territorial integrity or public safety, for the prevention of disorder or crime, for the protection of health or morals, for the protection of the reputation or rights of others, for preventing the disclosure of information received in confidence or for maintaining the authority and impartiality of the judiciary. In fact, when you go back to the uh, European grounds, you will see that several of them are linked to public order, which are listed under the grant B of the Article 19 of the ICCPR. And within the European Convention, there are only two grounds that may stand out. One, the prevention of disclosure of information received in confidence, and two, the uh, authority and impartiality of the judiciary. The first ground has rarely, if ever, been used. The ground related to the judiciary remains an important issue around the world and one that has been addressed by a range of tribunals, not just the European Court. What is the balance between the right to freedom of information and expression? and press freedom, and the right to a fair trial. And that is a, a regular question that courts have handled over the years. It is also an issue that may be addressed under ground A of the Article 19 of the ICCPR related to the rights of others. Now, let's review quickly these grounds. The right of others. These are basically all the rights recognized in the Covenant and more generally in international human rights law, and that includes, of course, the European, American and African Convention. With protection, a government may invoke to limit freedom of expression. For instance, the right to vote, the right to non-discrimination, the right to freedom of religion, the right to equality. All of those rights may be a basis for restriction of freedom of expression. So this is a very large grant. Let's consider some example. I'm going to present to you some, uh, some cases. A very well-known one in uh, Europe, a 1994 case, which is Otto Preminger versus Austria. Otto Preminger is, a, or was, an audiovisual media company established in Austria. It announced a series of films to be open to the public, including one entitled Console of Heaven. An information bulletin concerning the film stated that per persons under 17 years old were prohibited from seeing the film because of its trivial images and absurdities of the Christian creed. So basically, 
it was a movie that was uh, blasphemous for um, Christians. The Roman Catholic Church initiated criminal proceedings and the film was seized on the ground that it came within the definition of the criminal offense of disparaging religious precept. And the case eventually reached the European Court. So the court in the second step of the three-part test agreed that the Austrian government limitation made the legitimate ground part of the test. The court accepted that the measured pursued a legitimate aim under Article 10, Paragraph 2, namely the protection of the rights of others, because the purpose of the Austrian government was to protect the right of citizens not to be insulted in their religious feelings by the public expression of views of other persons. Needless to say, this is a decision that many people in the uh, press freedom and freedom of expression community have major problems with. But in any case, I have laid it out to you so that you can see how that part of the test can be used by court. Let's consider another one, a decision of the Human Rights Committee for a 2004 case, Svetnik versus Belarus. It concerns a representative of a Belarusian NGO who had signed a petition calling for a boycott of local elections as a protest against the electoral law, which that person and that NGO considered to be incompatible with the constitution and with international norms. Svetik claimed he had been targeted because he is part of the political opposition and therefore that he had been subjected to an administrative penalties on the sole basis of his political opinion. The case eventually reached the UN Human Rights Committee and the committee considered whether the restriction to freedom of expression met the second part of the test. Well, the, the court looked at all part of the test, but um, with regard to the second part of the test, it asked whether the uh, restriction limitation was made on valid grounds. The committee explained that Article 25 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights guarantees the right to vote, and that in order to pr protect that right, states should prohibit intimidation or coercion of voters by penal laws, and those laws should be strictly enforced. The committee stated that the application of such laws constitute in principle a lawful limitation on the freedom of expression, necessary for the respect of the right of others. So, uh, freedom of expression, the expression of a rejection of the vote may be um, restricted by a law that is focusing on the, the absence of coercion or intimidation in the process of voting. In applying those principles to the case, the committee emphasized that the distinction must be drawn between intimidation and coercion, on one hand, which is strictly prohibited, and simply encouraging voters to boycott election. The committee noted that voting was not compulsory in Belarus and that the declaration signed by the author did not affect the possibility of voters to freely decide whether or not to participate in the election. So the committee concluded that in the circumstances of the case, the restriction on freedom of expression did not serve one of the reasons enumerated in Article 19, Paragraph 3. Let's turn now to reputation of others. These concern defamation, libel, insult, and these are probably the greatest um, amount of restriction to freedom of expression around the world. We will have a special uh, session, segment, on defamation and libel in the sixth week. National security or ordre public is a third valid ground under uh, Article 19 and indeed under the regional provision. Again, this is a very important limitation to freedom of expression, one that has been historically used by government around the world to illegitimately restrict freedom of expression. And we will return to it in uh, week uh, six when we will discuss 
national security and freedom of expression, including in the context of countering terrorism. Just to say now that the Human Rights Committee has stated that it is not compatible to invoke such laws to suppress or withhold from the public information of legitimate public interest that does not directly harm national security or to prosecute journalists, researchers, activists, human rights defenders for having disseminated such information. Let's look at public morals. It is largely used in reference to expression perceived or characterized as obscene. For instance, in Handyside versus the UK, the European Court found that a ban imposed by the British authority under the Obscene Publication Act on a book called Little Red School Book. I think it's quite unknown now, but at the time it was a very controversial book. But uh, the European Court ruled that the restriction on that book was in accordance with the exception laid down in Article 10, Paragraph 2, regarding the protection of morals. The Little Red School book contained a 26-page section concerning sex, and that was the ground for um, limitation of its distribution. The Human Rights Committee has stated, with regard to the concept of public morals, that this concept derives from many social, historical, philosophical, religious tradition. Consequently, limitation for the purpose of protecting morals must be based on principles not deriving exclusively from a single tradition. Any such limitations must be understood in the light of universality of human rights and the principle of non-discrimination. Under the US First Amendment system, obscenity, as well as a form or category of speech that is not protected by the First Amendment because it is seen as holding very slight social values. There is, however, and around the world, a great deal of differences of opinion as to what amounts to obscenity and what could impact so negatively on public morale so as to justify curtailing freedom of expression. In conclusion, step two, related to the legitimacy of the restriction to freedom of expression, and in particular with regard to the ground under which that restriction is being enacted. International and regional provisions have listed a number of such grounds, which are large enough for the vast majority of restrictions to actually meet this particular test. We have to consider the jurisprudence in detail to determine what each of those grounds mean. In general, um, restrictions to freedom of expression do not fail on the, the second test. In the next segment, we will consider the third and arguably most important test of the three-part test, that of necessity.